Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode 8 in our campaign game with the Hunters, GMT Games Game of World War II U-Boat Combat, where you get to command a U-Boat through the Atlantic campaign. Who knew we would live so long? It's December 1940, we've survived seven patrols and we're about ready to go out onto our eighth patrol into the dark wintry waters of the Atlantic Ocean. We'll be celebrating Christmas under the ocean and hunting while we go. Let's get started with our eighth patrol. A quick recap as we head out on our eighth patrol here. We've had seven patrols prior to this, during which we've sunk nine ships for a total tonnage of 47,100 tons. This could be a significant mission for us because if our career were to end right now, we would have left less than 50,000 tons sunk, which technically in the game is a defeat. Between 50,000 and 100,000 tons, tons sunk over the course of your career is a draw. So we could move from losers to a draw game at this point if we have some success on this mission, mission and can sink over 2,900 tons of shipping. So that's our target, to be uh, beyond the loser category in this one. And with that being said, it's time to go out into the dark Atlantic waters in December of 1940. Let's see where we end up on patrol. All right, so this is our last month in this uh, July to December 1940 patrol box. After this, when we shift to 1941, a much greater possibility that we'll be getting patrols in the Atlantic. Right now, our three possible zones are British Isles, Spanish Coast, and Atlantic. But that's going to shift as we get to 1941 with it. Much more likely we'll be in the Atlantic. And in the Atlantic, we have convoys which will change the dynamic of our patrols quite a bit. But let's get started. We are a Corvette and Capitan level three, which means on a dice roll of one or two, we get to choose our patrol zone. We get a six, which means the fates will determine it. Let's see where we end up here. We get a six. Oh, here we go. Atlantic. The dark waters of the Atlantic Ocean. We'll be traveling far away from the British Isles and the Spanish coast this time. Let's get started. Convoys, here we come. So our patrol is going to take us from our French U-boat pens to the Bay of Biscay into the transit area, four zones of the Atlantic, then back to transit and back to Bay of Biscay and to our pens if all goes well. Let's get started as we head out of our U-boat pens into the Bay of Biscay. Once again, we're looking for a large number to avoid contact with aircraft. Four, uh-oh, <laughs> our luck may have run out. Aircraft, we have an encounter. We are going to need to crash dive. All right, so as the aircraft approaches, we have to crash dive here. A die roll has actually uh, no modifiers yet. It, it, nothing, we don't have any pluses or minuses. It's straight up in 1940 and 1941. We uh, need to roll a six or greater, hoping for a big die roll. Oh God, a five. Oh no, our luck has definitely run out. One attack has hit and one crew injury. God. So the aircraft has a successful attack here. We have to roll on uh, two dice to see how many hits are done. Because this is an air attack, there's a plus two modifier to it as well. I mean, there's a potential here we could be sunk. And we also have one crew injury automatically. So we're hoping for a nice low number. Ooh, yes, three. Three plus two is five. We take one hit plus a crew injury. Okay, let's see what damage has been done. So one thing we want to check before we roll on this is to see if we actually shot down or damaged the aircraft. So on a roll of three or less, we shoot it down. Uh, four or five damage, six or more, it's missed. Of course, it's most likely we're going to miss it. Five. Oh, we damaged the aircraft. Resolve a second air attack if called for, then proceed to the next travel box. Aircraft encounter ends. Interesting. I'm not quite sure what that means. I'll sort it out, but we have hit the aircraft anyway, so that's good for us. Let's resolve now the damage on our submarine on the U-boat as we've gone under the water here. By successfully uh, hitting that aircraft, this means that after we resolve the damage here, the aircraft departs and this encounter ends. So what we have to roll for is our crew casualty and then the U-boat damage chart. We're gonna roll for the U-boat damage chart first. This is a two digit number with the black, side, the black die being read first. We get a 26, which is our 3.7 centimeter flak gun. 
So I want to check to make sure now, because that was our flak gun, does our flak gun get damaged and then we fire at the aircraft, or is that considered simultaneous? I'm just going to check on the rules on that. I'll be right back. All right, so we, I, I kind of looked this up. Our flak gun is damaged, and it, the best I can tell from the rule reading is that the air attack and the flak gun firing are considered to be simultaneous, so we would be able to fire at the plane even though our flak gun was damaged on this round. Going forward, of course, because our flak gun is damaged, if we can't repair it and cannot fix it, then that would mean that we can't fire at any aircraft encounters. So the last thing we need to resolve now is our crew injury. Let's see who is hurt here. We get an eight. This is our general crew. So we need to roll now to see on a one to three, a four, five, or six, or six, it's killed in action. We get a four. It is a serious wound for one of our crew boxes here. And these pile up basically across from left to right. So we have our first crew injury. That means kind of a portion of our crew. I think each one of these boxes represents about 10 people because there is about 50 people or so, 40, 50 people on a U-boat. So we have some uh, serious wounds in our uh, portion of our crew now. But we're under the water. The aircraft is damaged, so it leaves the scene. Now we're going to get a chance to fix, to try to fix our uh, flat gun. On a one or a two, uh, the, on a one or a two, this is fixed on a three to six, sorry, the flat gun on one or two, it's fixed. On three to six, it's inoperable. Hopefully we can fix our flat gun here. Six, no. So our flat gun remains uh, damaged. It goes to inoperable and we will not be able to attack aircraft for the rest of this patrol. Hopefully that won't be a factor. Let's continue on now with our patrol. We also have to consider what happens here with our seriously wounded crew members. I believe as we move forward, we have to roll now to see if uh, some of them die or not. And it, we haven't been hit for so long. I've realized I've forgotten quite a bit of the rules in here, so I'm going to have to look things up as we go along. But the patrol continues on despite its rather ominous start. We will now head into the transit zone from the Bay of Biscay with our flak guns inoperable and part of our crew seriously wounded. Now apparently they do stay alive because we have a doctor, Dr. David, who is an expert doctor, uh, maintains our crew injury level, our crew wounds at the same level. If he were seriously wounded or killed, then other seriously wounded or um, seriously wounded crew members could die in between zones. But because he's functional, he keeps our crew members at the serious wounded level. So really the only piece of functionality that we've lost is if we should happen to run into another aircraft as we go through these transit zones and through our tour here. So let's see if we can, we're through the Bay of Biscay, we damaged the plane so it is gone, our flat gun's knocked off and some of our crew are wounded. We head into the transit zone, hoping for a nice safe transit into the Atlantic here. We get a 10, excellent, good, we're off into the Atlantic. Nice. Now, the Atlantic, if we look at our chart here, we can see that our four zones here, we have a very high likelihood that we're going to run into a convoy, which is a completely new experience for us. We'll go against four targets at the same time. So let's see what happens as we hit our first convoy zone, our first Atlantic zone here. We get a six, which is a convoy result. So let's set this up. This is a completely different type of encounter. encounter. It's our first one of these, so this will be fun. So for uh, convoy attacks, basically they are always escorted and it's actually not that complicated. We, instead of having one target, however, we roll for four targets, which is basically the portion of the convoy that we are kind of near and co considered to be more ships in the convoy, but these are the four targets that are near our U-boat. Now, rather than roll all four of these targets, I'm gonna start with seeing whether it's day or night because if it is day, because this is our first patrol zone, we're gonna wait until night and if we lose the target, then it doesn't make sense to roll for all the targets. So let's roll first to see if it's day or night, hoping for a four through six. A two, it's not. So we're gonna try to wait for night. On a one to four, we succeed. On a five or a six, we've lost the target. Hoping for a one to a four here. Yes, okay. So the encounter successfully shifts to, shifts to night. Now, rather than roll all these on screen for the four different targets, I'm gonna roll these off camera and then talk about what the results were because that'll just be a lot faster. All right, so off camera, I rolled through our four targets. We actually got two tankers, two sixes on the first two targets. One is the British Premier at 5,900 tons. And then by far the juiciest target we rolled, which is the Caledonia. 9,900 ton tanker. 
just small enough to fit in the three hit put box box if it were 10,000 tons it would have four hit points so thinking this is going to be our target as we have the small freighter here which is the 4,500 ton Cape Rodney and then the 4,400 ton Nicholas Patteris so by far our juiciest target here is the Caledonia at 9,900 tons and we're going to come in at medium range we're going to come in in the surface because it's nighttime we're going to fire all we could spread this out differently but we're going to fire all four torpedoes at the caledonia i want to try to tank it down take it down three hits i'm figuring we're probably going to miss on one we're probably going to have one dud so hopefully the two that hit and explode could get enough damage to take the caledonia down that's our plan let's get going and let's fire Right, so here we go. We are firing at medium range. Normally we need a seven or less, but because we're on a night surface torpedo, we need eights or less. We get four torpedo shots. Fire one, four, excellent. Fire two, eight hits, excellent. Fire three, a nine, a miss. Come on, let's get one more hit. Fire four, a seven, excellent. Three hits. Let's see what happens for duds. Ones or twos or duds. Above that are hits. Let's get all three hits here. Put it down. Excellent. Sorry, that's a little bit off there. Six, six, and five. All three hit and all three explode, which means that it's just a matter of uh, course here that, that, that the big tanker here is going to go down. Makes me think we should have hit other ships. But, I mean, this is the right way to do it, I think. So let's see the damage we get and say goodbye to the Caledonia. We get a one, a two, and a six. The one does four damage. The two does three damage for seven damage. The six does one more damage. Eight damage instead of the three that we needed. God, we should have spread those out a little bit. The Caledonia shatters under eight hit points worth of damage and plummets quickly, rolls over, and disappears to the bottom of the ocean. We've got 9,900 tons sunk here. Now we have to, however, comes the less fun part in that we have to escape detection. All right, so it's a very simple roll. We need an eight or less to go undetected here. This is the last month, 1940, we have no dial roll modifiers. In 1941 or later, uh, in 1941, there's a plus one die roll modifier to this. So the game as it goes on, it gets more and more likely that you're gonna be detected. We need an eight or less, fingers crossed. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the U-boat gods are shining on us. We get an eight. We d submerge, and the escorts fail to detect us. Most excellent work. Now, I think we have here an option to trail this convoy. I'm going to think about that, and then we'll proceed. We're going to attempt to follow the convoy. Now, if we had damage from ships, we had a lot of different options here. But basically, because we only sunk a ship and didn't damage anything, it's a very simple calculation. On a roll of one to four, we've successfully followed the convoy, and we regenerate a new encounter. So let's see what happens here. A four. Excellent. So we have successfully followed the convoy. Now we have to roll to see what kind of encounter it is. And rather than generate all the ships again, I'm gonna roll to see whether it's day or night, and then we're gonna go from there. We can also follow uh, and attempt to try to get them at night. So let's see if it's day or night. Four, excellent, it's night. So once again, we get to set up an entirely new four set of targets considered to be a different part of the convoy, and we get to attack again. So let's roll for new ships. I'll set that up and be right back. Here are our four targets. Our juiciest target is the first one, the 9,500 ton Kongsguard, a big fat tanker. The next three targets of much smaller scale, all small freighters, the 3,100 ton Clintonia, the 3,800 ton Scoresby, and the 2,700 ton Vingeland. Smaller targets indeed, I think I, we were pretty lucky to get so many hits on that last tanker, and this large tanker is by far the juiciest target. We're going to once again follow that strategy. All four storm te steam torpedoes that we've reloaded going after the uh, Kongsguard at 9,500 tons. Once again, we're going to come in at immediate range, me, uh, medium range. Once again, we're going to come in at uh, on the surface here with an attempt to take out this target. We get uh, four shots. If we take a look again at our torpedo deck, it's at medium range. We need sevens or less, but because we're coming in at night on the surface, eights or less, let's fire and see how we do. Fire one, five, hit, nice. Fire two, two, hit, 
fire three. A nine is a miss. This last hit, fire four, a three, a hit. Excellent, that's the exact same pattern that we had last time. Let's see what we get for dud results. Hoping for greater than twos, threes and above, please. Ooh, <laughs> two threes and a two. So two hits on the tanker. Now let's see, this is not an automatic sunkage. We need at least one of these dice to be threes or less. So hoping for ones, twos, or threes on the torpedo damage chart. Let's roll for our two hits. Let's put this to the bottom. God, no. Ah, bummer. So we get one damage with each of those two hits. They slam into the side of the tanker. It is wounded, but not out of commission. Now we get to, first we have to try to, d to escape detection. Then we get a chance to see if we can follow again. If we do follow, we're gonna be going after this tanker for sure. So let's see first if we escape detection. Once again, this is a straight up roll. We need an eight or less to escape detection. Holding, hoping for a nice low number. Let's go. Five, yes. <laughs> the U-boat gods are really good for us on detection. That's pretty lucky. Okay, so we have escaped undetected. Now we're gonna determine that we wanna try to follow this. And I think we can try to, I have to I'm gonna check to see how the rules work because we haven't done this yet. My go The goal is gonna be to try to follow this wounded tanker. See if we can put it to the bottom of the ocean. Alrighty, so this is a very simple die roll. Uh, we're following, because we're following a damaged ship, the following is automatic. And on a roll of one to four, the tanker will still be under escort. The Kongs guard will still be escorted. If we get a five or a six, the escorts have abandoned the tanker. So let's hope we get a five or a six because that would allow us to come in with our deck guns and just put it out of its misery. Let's see, come on for a five or a six, please. Yes, nice. Excellent. Okay, so let's set up this encounter here and let's see if we can finish off the Kongsguard. Alrighty, so we have reloaded with electric torpedoes. We still have a, tor a steam torpedo and the aft tubes. Because this is an unescorted ship, we're going to come right up at close range and we're just going to let fire with our deck guns. I feel this is... I mean, this is pretty bad. First, we, we have to see, I guess, just for the sake of it, it doesn't matter really for the tactics or the results. We have to see if it's day or night. On a one, two, or three, it is daytime, and it's five, so it is still nighttime. Um, however, we're going to come in on the surface at close range at night, the badly limping Kongsguard, leaking oil with a fractured hull, and has been abandoned mercilessly by the unsympathetic escorts left to its own fate as it traverses the Atlantic Ocean here. We're coming in with our deck gun and trying to put it out of its misery. God, this feels almost bad, I feel like. We get two shots with our deck gun. At close range, we need eights or less. Um, firing twice. Any one of these that hits would put it away. Nine. The first one misses. Come on, let's get it. Six. So we hit. Let's roll just for damage, although it is automatic because we're going to get at least one damage. Three, we get one damage, and that's the end of the Kong's Guard. We put it out of the ocean and out of the war. Gosh, that was just, um, that was, uh, <laughs> that was about a sitting duck as you possibly can get. 9,500 tons of damage again, and with that, the first patrol box ends and now we can continue we still have three patrol boxes left to go by far this has been our most successful patrol in terms of damage sunk so far although there is still a lot of patrolling left to be had so let's progress now to our second patrol zone all right let's see what we've got as we had <laughs> that was just all that action the atlantic is crazy all that action in our first patrol zone we're only off into our second patrol zone however a factor to note here is that we only have four torpedoes left in our forward torpedo tubes, and they're all electric, which are the crappy ones that I think they have a dud rate of one to three, and they're more easily, they're less likely to hit. So these are the kind of the crappy torpedoes. Uh, so what happens for the rest of the, the tour? We may that may be our entire our entire action here, but let's see what happens, at least in terms of being able to ship uh, sink things. So in the Atlantic, patrolling again. Let's see if we can find something. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Capital ship. Oh. This is like where you get an automatic medal, I think. It's, it's, 
This is the big one, the one that we want. And we only have four electric torpedoes left to face it. Okay, we're gonna set it up and let's see what it looks like here because we may still wanna go for it. This is, this is like the golden opportunity that we can, we can get. Oh, this is such a good patrol so far. Alrighty, so the first thing we do with the capital ship is we roll one ten-sided die to see which ship it is. Each one of these is a named counter and a named ship. And noticing here that the ones that have the asterisks in the bold, sinking them automatically results in a knight's cross to our commander, which would be a nice metal to tack on. And the tonnage here, notice the tonnage there, most of them are very heavy. Let's see what we get. A nice big six for the Nelson, the battleship would be nice here. Seven. Oh, it's the Malaya. Let's pull that out and put in here. Oh my goodness, this is... We, we definitely would like to sink this. It has five hit points, however. It is the Malaya, which would automatically result in a Knight's Cross to our Commandant. 34,000 tons. Good Lord, that's like three times what... We've sunk two freighters at about 20,000 tons. It's bigger than that by another 11, 12,000 tons. Okay, so next up we have to roll to see if it is night or day. Now, this is important because we can't shift to night if it's an undamaged uh, capital ship. So whatever it is is what we get. If we tried to wait for night, the capital ship is too fast and would escape. Also, it's worth noting, let's set this up here too. Uh, capital ships are always under escort and there are other kind of bad modifiers to this as they're considered to be pretty well guarded here. There's like a plus one die roll modifier to escape detection. So this is a very dangerous situation for us, but let's hope we get night. Come on, four to six. God, it's daytime. Okay, um, I'm gonna think, we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do. And we're going to set this up. We can't, we simply can't pass the target by. I, I feel like that would be unheroic of us. So we're going in. It's just a question of how to do it. All righty, here we go. I've thought through these things and looked at some of the odds and stuff like that. Because it is daytime, we're going to come in submerged and we're going to come in at medium range. We're not going to try to close to close range because that would result, that would result in a, a detection roll for us first. And then we would have another modifier of plus one on the detection after. This, however, means we're gonna be firing electric torpedoes at medium range, and we don't get a night or unescorted surface torpedo modifier, which means we need a seven or less normally. However, the, the electric torpedoes means we need a six or less. Now, fortunately, I did notice that the electric torpedoes actually have a one to two uh, dud modifier. I thought it was one to three, but because it's after July 1940, uh, they've gotten better. So it's a one to two modifier as we're in December of 1940. But we're gonna fire and unload the last remaining torpedoes we have in our forward torpedo tubes, all electric ones. This is actually helpful because even though it's daytime, electric torpedoes don't increase the chance of detection. The steam ones release off bubbles, so that would hurt us. So it's somewhat fortunate that we have the electric ones, although they're less likely to hit. With all this um, babblage being said, we're gonna fire four torpedoes at the Malaya in daytime from medium range submerged. Okay. We need sixes or less. To be realistic, we really are, we're gonna need two hits at least. To have any chance to sink it, we need two explosions to hit. Hoping we can get lucky and get three hits here. Fire one. Yes! Oh, we hit! Fire two. Ah, miss! Come on, boys, let's get it. Fire three. Ah, another miss! Fire four. Yes! Three, okay, we come back. So we have two hits. Now we're rolling for duds. We, we need these two to get through. Threes or greater to succeed. If, if one of them hits, we can't sink it. We, we need at least damage it to have a chance to sink it. Hoping for better than threes on both of these. Ah, bloody hell. So we got one hit out of the four that explodes and does damage. Now we have to see how much damage it does a die roll of one does four damage, so we can't sink it. The most we can do is badly damage it. Hoping for a one, a three. A three does two damage. God. Okay, now we have to escape detection, however. And this is not an easy roll in this case, because normally we need an eight or less. However, because we are coming after a capital ship, 
it's plus one to the dice roll. That's the only modifier. And because we were uh, submerged, we can exceed test depth to reduce that by one. And because we're undamaged, we're actually going to do that. So that means that we're going to dive deep. We're going to go below test depth. And it automatically puts one damage onto our hull. But that adds one more die roll to this, minus one to the die roll, plus one because we're a capital ship. We need eight or less to go undetected. Yes, four. Okay. Now we have the choice of whether we want to follow or not. Let's think this through. There is no doubt we are going to follow, although we only have two torpedoes left in the aft torpedo tubes. Our, all of our forward torpedoes have been fired. One thing I realized uh, reading the rules here too, by following a damaged ship, we can choose whether it's day or night and the following is automatic, which means that we're going to choose night, of course. We're going to come in with medium range because it always keeps its escort, a capital ship, and we're going to come in on the surface. We will fire, uh, we're going to fire our aft torpedo tube, our sole single torpedo that's in there. The odds that this goes through and hits and sinks the ship are uh, relatively remote here, but we're going to take our chances. So let's, let's go through this. Firing at medium range, we got one shot. Basically, we need to hit, it needs to not be a dud, and we need to roll a one or a two to do three or more damage to the ship to be able to sink it. And then once again, we're going to have to try to escape detection. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> this is pretty unlikely, but the target, the prize is too great to resist. Firing at medium range, we need a seven or less to hit. However, because it's a night surface torpedo, we, need, uh, we, add, we subtract one from the die roll, which means we need an eight uh, to hit or less. This is a steam torpedo, but it's at night. It won't matter. So fire one. Oh, bloody hell, we missed. Okay. Uh, so now we have to roll for detection. Normally we need an eight or less. We can't do a deep dive uh, because exceeding test depth because we started on the surface. It's not allowed, you can't get down that fast. Because it's a capital ship, it's plus one to the die roll. So we need a seven or less in order to be able to escape here. Hoping for a nice roll, low roll. Oh, 10. It's an 11 because it's plus one, which means uh, detected. Okay, so now we have to be depth charged. Let's set this up. Alrighty, so uh, we have an uh, escort attack chart here. We have been detected. Our die roll modifiers are a plus one because it was a night surface attack on the first round only. We add one to this. So we're adding one to our die roll. Rolling, hopefully get a nice low two, maybe. A 10, oh, it's an 11. Four hits on our sub. This is going to be painful. Let's roll for damage. All right, so our first roll. This, again, the black die is the first digit here. We got a 65 hull times two. Oof, that's not good. That means that our, oops, sorry, let's set this up on the damage chart. I'm gonna just pull this in one sec. Alrighty, we are back. So hull damage times two. We already had one from our earlier deep dive. That means we have three damage now on the hull. Let's roll for our second hit. 51 is flooding. Okay, so with flooding, we advance the flooding marker in one box, but then we have to roll at the end of the combat round to check for additional flooding until the flooding has to be stopped. So we've got to keep track of that. That is our second hit. We have two more to resolve. Let's see what we've got for the third one. 64, if I'm not mistaken, uh, forward torpedo door is now damaged. That's all busted. Okay, so we get that here. That is this. Uh, that's not going to matter because we don't have any forward torpedoes left, so that's rather good, I would guess. And then our last damage here is a 51, which is flooding again. So that's our second flooding opportunity. So let's uh, continue on. I believe we have to check for the flooding at the end of this combat round to see if there's more flooding, and then we have to escape detection again. All right, so the first thing we need to do is at the end of this combat round, we have to roll to see if the flooding continues. On a roll of one to four, it's stopped. On a five to six, it results in additional flooding. So we will roll these two dice for each one of those two hits and apply the results. 
six and a three. One is stopped, one results in additional flooding. I just want to check to make sure if we have to continue to roll on that six or not, but I don't think we do. Alrighty, now we need to try to escape detection and the odds uh, tip against us here. Normally we need an eight or less because there's a capital shift involved, it's plus one. And because we were previously detected, it is now plus one more. So plus two to the die roll, which means that we need a six or less. Now we could try to go below test depth, which would put one more hit of damage onto our hull, giving us four and would also give us the potential if we rolled a three or a two that the submarine would explode. We do have, however, our lucky horseshoe here. That would mean that a seven or less would be what we need there. Let's hold off on that for the moment. I think we're going to kind of wait to see what happens with this. We'll take one here first. So we need a six or less to escape detection. Let's get lucky. Come on, some of that U86 luck. Ah, oh, an eight. Bloody hell, I've been detected again. Okay, plus two is 10, which is detected. Now we roll for the attack here. Fuel tanks hit, batteries damaged, nothing else here. Night surface attack, first round only. Roll 12 plus on detection. Nope, 1943 air attack. Good. It is just a straight roll. Let's hope for a two or three. That'd be nice. Four. Okay, that's not bad. Only one hit this time. So let's see what the damage is in this next round of attack here. We get a 15, which are the dive planes. That doesn't sound very good. So let's put the dive planes... Uh, sure what they are. I'm going to guess they're this. That sounds... That's the hydrophone. Must be that. We'll try that. Nope. That's hydrophones. Well, I'm going to sort this out. Then we'll be right back. One sec. Alrighty. So, yes. I think believe these are the dive planes here and they are damaged. And that is a bad thing because when the dive planes are damaged, it adds one to our detection roll, which means now as we go to try to escape detection, normally we need an eight or less because it's a capital ship, we add one. Because it's uh, previously detected, we add one. And because our dive planes are out, we add one more. So we would need, uh, adding three to the die roll, we need a five or less. <sighs> We're gonna exceed test depth. And that puts us at a four here. This means we have to roll greater than a four, otherwise we suffer more damage. If we roll a three or a two, the U-boat would explode, which we don't want to have happen. 10. Okay, so we have exceeded test depth, which is going to give us a minus one modifier on the die roll at the cost of one more hull damage there, bringing us to four. So instead of a five or less, we need a six or less to escape detection. U boat gods, shine on us now. A nine. Oh gosh. Plus two is an 11, so we're detected again. Let's roll for hits here. Hopefully, we get something nice and low. God, 10. So a 10 is, oh, let's see, we got here, batteries damaged, nope, nothing else applies to us. So it's just 10 is three hits. Oh gosh, this is, things getting <laughs> ugly here for us. Let's roll for each one of the three here. Here's our first one. 43, flooding. Oh, bloody heck. So that's one more flooding zone there. All right, let's get another one. Three hits, right? Yep. 63, uh, crew injury times two. We'll roll for that after this. Let's get this last one. 44 is more flooding. Uh, okay, it's not very good. <laughs> so let's roll for our crew injuries. Uh, first up, we have to roll twice on this because we have two. The first one injured is 12 is an agent. Uh, we don't have an agent, so I think if we don't have an agent, I think it means it's nothing, right? Let me just double check that. All right, yes, yeah, so that's a bit of good fortune. Because we don't have an agent, that's actually no impact on us. Let's roll for the second crew injury. Six, which is the crew. Let's see to what degree this is. A three, which is a light wound, okay? So that's not too bad. Let's get that out here. Now we have to roll. It's getting a little bit precarious here on the flooding because we're up to five zones filled on the flooding. Let's hope that our engineer here uh, can uh, 
Engineer Mahler here can get down there and, and stop the flooding. We need a roll of one to four to stop it. Two, yes, okay, so no further flooding because we only have three more spaces for flooding. That brings that combat round to an end. Now we have to try to escape detection again. All right, I, I don't think we can keep going to exceed test depth. We're at a point where we might, you know, at a five, rolling a four, three, or two, we would have to use our lucky horseshoe and it would put more damage on. I think we have to just hope for a good roll here. So um, we need an eight or less normally. We have plus three modifiers. We need a five or less to escape detection. It, it, things are looking somewhat grim here for our heroes. Less than dice roll gods can help us out here. Five or less, please. Oh, yes, we've escaped detection. We're out of here, okay. So now we can try to fix things and see where we go from there. So we have managed, we've got four hull damage, five flooding. We could follow the Malaya too, which is another thing, but first we have to see if we can fix our dive planes. Let's check on that. One to two is fixed and three to six is inoperable. Let's see if we can fix them. Come on, Engineer Mahler. Ah, inoperable. So our dive planes are broken. Let's see if we can fix our forward torpedo tubes. I think we need one to two is fixed. Uh, this doesn't really matter because we don't have torpedoes. Five, nope, those are inoperable. So we have massive flooding inside the U-boat. Our hull is halfway towards fracturing. Our flat gun's knocked out. We've got crew seriously wounded and lightly wounded. Our dive planes don't work and our forward torpedo tubes are, our forward torpedo tubes are jammed. Um, other than that, we're in good shape. We have no torpedoes left in the front or aft. The question is, do we follow and try to get one more shot? Because we can reload our aft tubes. We would have one more shot against the Malaya. Let's think for a second what we want to do here. Alrighty, after much discussion with our first watch officer, watch officer McLeod and second watch officer Ray, we have decided to abort to follow the capital ship. The odds that we would sink the Malaya with our one remaining aft torpedo are extremely slim. And given the massive damage that we've suffered to the U-boat so far, it's time for discretion to rule in our judgment. We are going to pass, which will mean that that encounter ends. We've escaped detection and we are going to... Basically, with, with the flooding that we've got on the ship right now, it's pretty likely if we were detected again and with our dive planes out, going against the capital ship, we were probably going to get detected and flooding results are pretty common. I think it's much more likely that the U-boat would end up at the bottom of the ocean than the Malaya. So we are Malaya. So we are abandoning that. We're going to search, however, in the Atlantic here. We get to roll again. Let's see what we get. We could conceivably get a ship or something and, and, and maybe take a surface attack, but it's more than likely we're going to pass on our encounters and try to limp home now. We get an eight. An eight is nothing here. Okay, so let's move on to our last patrol zone in the Atlantic. See what we kind of get for results here. A three. Oh, we got lucky. A ship unescorted. And we do have our deck guns to fire here. So we could get something else. Let's see what kind of encounter we get. Let's set this up. All right, let's see if it's night or day. A one, two, or three, it's day. Five, it is nighttime. It doesn't really matter with these attacks here, so that should work out fine. Um, let's see what size it is. Actually hoping for something small here because we don't have a much fire, but we have our deck guns and one torpedo left. Two, small freighter, nice. So let's see which one this is using our 171. It is the, oh, this is tiny, 1,300 ton Anna. So we will put that out. That means it's only got two hits here. Unescorted, we don't have that torpedo anymore. That's gone. We're gonna come in first. Uh, it's pretty straightforward here on this one. We'll come in first with our deck guns. We're gonna fire both shots. We only need two hits to get it. We'll come in at close range because it's unescorted. It's at night. We're gonna come in at the surface because that doesn't really matter on the deck guns. Uh, if we fail here, we can turn around and fire our aft torpedo, but that's about it. Uh, and then we're pretty much out of luck here. But at medium range, our close range, we need eights or less. If both of these hit, we would put the Anna to the bottom of the sea, firing twice. Seven, so we get one hit. Let's get this last hit and finish it off. 
Seven, excellent. So we get two hits. Let's roll for damage, but the Anna is is pretty much go is gone. We know that. Get a four and a four, that does two damage. The Anna shatters under the damage incurred from our deck guns. And we put, as kind of a bonus to this mission, our third ship, Anna at 1,300 tons, ends up sinking to the bottom of the ocean. And that puts us with two less rounds of deck ammo. That ends that encounter in our final zone. Now it's time to see if we can limp through the transit zones and make it home. All right, so we leave the, the cold waters of the December Atlantic and head back towards France. First, we have to get through the transit zone. This would be an awful time for some bad luck. Need a four or greater, a 10, excellent. So we're through the first one. Now comes the much more dangerous Bay of Biscay. We need five or greater, fingers crossed. Let's get home, please. <laughs> I saw the one and the other one was still rolling and I said, oh no, we're screwed. A seven, we have made it back to port, but our ship, our U-boat, U-86, taking a pounding here. Let's uh, refit and summarize this, this our most deadly patrol and also the one in which we, we by far have suffered the most damage. All right, so we have some refitting to do here. Back in the U-boats, we have uh, three systems inoperable here. We have our forward torpedo tubes, our dive planes, and our flak gun have all been knocked out. So instead of the normal one month that it would take to refit the ship, because we have three or more systems knocked out, it's gonna add an additional month. So that means our refit period would be two months instead of one month. However, uh, in addition to that, our hull has suffered four damage, and for each increment of uh, three, with fractions rounded up, we suffer an additional one month of refit time, which means that our two-month refit is extended by one more month to three months, and then an additional month to four months. So it, normally it would take four months for us to be refitted. Our crew will heal because, heal because we did not have uh, more, all four spots seriously wounded and things like that. Our crew comes back at the same level, which is trained, and it can't go less than that anyway. So our crew casualties are taken care of. The pumps uh, remove the flooding damage. Our hull is repaired. Now, normally all this would take four months. However, because we're a level three Corvette and Capitan, a repair of four months takes one month less. So it will be three months of refit going from January, February, March, which means our next patrol will be in April of 1941. In the meantime, too, we can reload our ammo and torpedoes, too. Of course, we'll need those. And let's talk a little bit. Let's sum up what we did for, uh, for damage here. So we sunk the 9,900-ton freighter, the tanker Caledonia, and the second tanker we sunk was the Kongsguard at 9,500 tons. Not only that, although we were badly damaged, on the way back we managed to pick up the small freighter, the Anna, at 1,300 tons. Adding that all up, it is by far our most successful mission to date, which is 20,700 tons of damage. Over half of what we've managed to accomplish in the first part of the war here. Added to our 47,100 tons of damage, it gives us a total now of 67,800 tons, which means that we are effectively into the draw zone in the combat chart. So we no longer will have lost the game if the game if our U-boat is to be sunk at this point. So go us. We're now uh, no longer losers at the game. We're into that the tie range. Um, I think that pretty much sums everything up. The big note, of course, was our epic confrontation with the Malaya, which, although we put two hits on it, we weren't able to sink it. We suffered incredible depth charge, jet depth charge damage there for extended, what was it, three rounds or so. And we were really lucky to escape. I think we weren't too far away on this flooding damage mark from having, and flooding's a pretty common damage result from the end of uh, U-86, even with our lucky horseshoe there. So, yeah, but anyway, that gives us, patrol number eight is a success, an epic patrol, 20,700 20, tons and three ships, uh, ships put to the bottom of the ocean. We have survived, resulting in a three month refit. Our next patrol then will be April of 1941. So it's gonna take three months before we're back at sea. U-86 will once again patrol the waters of the Atlantic. 
Thanks so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, please consider subscribing. We'll see you in April for episode number nine, patrol number nine, as the saga of U86 continues. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in.